لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. All praise due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We praise Him. We thank Him. We seek Allah's forgiveness. We seek Allah's help. We seek Allah's assistance. And we ask Allah always to increase us in knowledge to bring us closer to Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us understanding of the purpose of our existence. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make every day we live in this planet bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His pleasure. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our best days is the days we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us as Ummah, as a community, as follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the preservation of our religion. Our religion has been preserved in a miraculous way. You know, every Muslim knows what is the Azan, what is the Iqama, if he missed the word in the Azan, missed the word in the Iqama, how many rak'ah in every Salah, what time is the Salah, and all these are not mentioned in the Quran. Yeah, or the time for Asr, how many rak'ah in Asr, the time for Fajr, how many rak'ah in Fajr, what is the Iqama of Salah, all these are preserved by the Muslim Ummah, by those miraculous people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for that purpose. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have left the deen for us as Ummah and says, Kuntum khayra Ummah ukhrijat liknas. Allah says, you were created for mankind. You were created to hold on to that light, to hold on to that religion, that way of life, that Obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and loving His Messenger more than anything else. And from these examples, we mentioned a few, inshallah, today. Those people that are an inspiration for us, those people that we need to compare, we need to compare what we've done to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given us blessing, He can't count. And what have we done to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our list? What is, or who is number one in our list? Because everybody is asking the Ummah of Muhammad, the Muslim Ummah are in the bottom of the list. You know why the Ummah of Muhammad is in the bottom of the list? Because Allah is in the bottom of the list. If, you know, it's exactly what you think of Allah. Allah says, I will be as my servant expect me to be. If we expect Allah to be in the bottom of our list, He will have us in the bottom of the list of every nation. If Allah is number one, we will be number one. And this is the story of today because we have a problem here in Pisan. We have a story for the families. I said I will share some of that with the Juma brothers and sisters. So the story is about a man. His name is Al Shafi'i. Every one of us, inshallah, heard about the Imam Al Shafi'i. Imam Al Shafi'i was less than two years old when his father died. We're talking 1,300 years ago. Father died, it means you're absolutely finished. There's no future. Finished. But his mother was from Quraysh. His mother was from Mecca. And she just had that ambition. She said, I will make my child get the knowledge. I will take him back to Mecca. Leave where? He was born in Gaza. And took him back to Mecca to study. And the most amazing thing, he memorized the whole Quran at the age of seven. That is a miraculous. That is a miracle that does not happen to anybody and everybody. He memorized the Quran and he was only seven years old. Not only that, when he recited the Quran, people cry. Imam al when he recited the Quran, nobody can control their emotion because he was related to the Prophet Sallallahu Very, very close to Abdul Manaf, which is the same tribe of the Prophet Sallallahu then he studied with every scholar in Mecca. He was 12 years old and nobody can teach him anymore. He has known every knowledge in Mecca with every scholar. The, the, the head teachers of Mecca at the time wrote him a letter 
says the most knowledgeable person on the face of the earth is Imam Malik. And he is in Medina. He sits by the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. He sits in the road for 30 years teaching. This is the status of our people. This is the status of our women and scholars. So Imam Shafi'i, 12 years old boy, 12 years old boy takes a letter and travel 1,300 years ago. No cars, no train, no plane. He's going to travel by donkey or horse in the heat of the sun. And he takes a letter and the scholars of Mecca give him a book. He says, this book is written by Imam Malik. It was the most authentic book on the face of the earth at the time. It's called Muatta al-Imam Malik, like al-Bukhari now. But the Bukhari came 150 years later. So Imam Shafi'i go on a journey from Mecca to Medina, it took about 12 days. What does he do? What a 12 years old boy do? Play games? Throw stones around? He read the book. He read the book, thousands and thousands of hadiths of the Prophet Sallallahu memorizing it. When he arrived at Imam Malik, he knocks on the door and he says, I'm from Mecca and I got this letter for you. He read the letter and he says to him, 12 years old, even the students of my students can, can you know, teach you. You need to go another three levels down. The students of my students have more older people like than you. You want to live with me? The most knowledgeable person in the face of the earth. <coughs> so the Shafi says to him, the Shaykh told me I'm going to learn from you. He says, well, can you read? He doesn't know what he's looking at. He says, I can read. I have memorized your book. <coughs> this just blows the top of my mind away. He says, what? Did you memorize my book? My book? Nobody memorized it. Nobody. Even those he's teaching for 30 years. He says, come to me after Asr. And they sat after Asr. And he recites an Imam Malik crying. From the way he pronounced the letters, from the way he pronounced the Arabic, from the way he reads even the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu the Imam Shafi, a 12 years old boy, he was feeling shy. The Imam must be very tired. He wanted to let him go. And the Imam says, Zid. Zid ya Ghulam, Zid ya Ghulam. He kept on reading till Aisha time. Says, come tomorrow. And three days, he memorized from memory, from memories, narrating for Imam Malik the whole book. He stayed with Imam Malik for 16 years, learning everything that the Imam knows, till the Imam passed away. This is somebody Allah created to serve and serve the deen. This is how we learn what we do is. This is how we learn what salah is, what fasting is, what sadaqah is, what zakah is, how we do hajj. Because it's not in the Quran. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he created these scholars for us to preserve the deen pristine, fresh, as it was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu Because of the action of those people. They were, it was not easy for them to sacrifice 16 years of their life in a really hard work to memorize and study in a different city, in a different country. He traveled all the way to Yemen to gain knowledge. He traveled to Egypt to gain, to gain knowledge. Imam Shafi'i of the Lano. And it wasn't easy for him. He almost was killed by the rulers. Because some of the rulers in Yemen were absolutely tyrant. As we see today, it was exactly the same. And these rulers were so arrogant that they invented something in the deen is called Quran is created. Quran, Quran, they said, they don't know anything, they said, Quran is created, it's not, a, it's not a speech of Allah. Even though Allah in the Quran says, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا Allah spoke to Musa, Allah spoke to Jesus. Yeah, it says in the Quran that Allah speaks. But those rulers, they have no idea and they just stuck to some ideas that Quran is created. Anybody that says to them no, they will kill them. Even if it's Imam. So they arrested Imam al-Shafi'i. Look at how intelligent he is, radiallahu anhu. He, they arrested him and he knows this rulers are very tired, they're gonna do something horrible. He kept on thinking. When he arrived there in the court of this king, he asked him, Is the Quran created Shafi'i? So Shafi'i did something very funny. He rose his hand in the crowd and he says, The Quran, the Bible, the Injil, the Old Testament, the Torah, as the war of David and the Sahaf of Ibrahim and Musa, all the scroll that Abraham and Musa got, all those are created. 
The king was so happy, he said, oh, mashallah, thank you very much, you know, and Jafar became so famous. So when he gone outside, his students were really shocked, confused. What are you talking about? He says, what? You said that every, he says, I was pointing at my fingers, man. All those are created. I'm not talking about the, you know, I said the Quran, the Injil, the Torah, the Zabur, all those are created by Allah. All those are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a king that's going to kill you. You need to use your intelligence. These are our scholars. These are the Muslim Ummah that preserved the deen for us. They were, they were heroes. They were super smart. They say if you give him a book, he has to hide one sign. Not to memorize both pages at the same time. Let's Imam Shafi'i. Imam Shafi'i, when he was young, he said, young, less than seven years old boy, with a scholar. And the scholar saw him put his fingers in his mouth, licking and doing this in his hand. Licking his fingers and doing this in his hand. So the scholar says, this boy is getting up. So they called him, come in here. What are you doing in this haqqa? He said, I'm learning. My mom sent me to learn. My mom wants me to learn. Is that learning? The scholar said to him, he says, <coughs> Wallahi, we're so poor, so poor. We don't have the money to buy ink, we don't have the money to buy paper, we don't have anything. I'm just memorizing everything you say. I'm writing it in my hand and wiping it out. Every time you say something else, I'm writing it in my hand and wiping it out. The scholar says, memorize everything I said. He said, everything you said today. Recite, and he recite the whole thing. That's the name of And all the others, are as great. <coughs> All the others are as great. Every one of us knows Imam Bukhari. Bukhari is not an Arab. Bukhari was blind. No one knows this. He was blind. The leaders of the Muslim Ummah, the one who preserved the deen, the one who memorized more than 600,000 hadith, 600,000 lectures, and only got the pure of the pure of the pure, and put 4,000 only in the book. They asked him, he said, I memorized more than 600,000 hadith and I only took less than 1%, the pristine of the pristine, to give to us. So every one of us knows exactly where the Prophet put his hand in Salah. Where did he raise his hand? How did he do tasbih? How he did sujood? Nobody in the face of the earth knows the religion as we are. So it's a duty on all of us to enjoy that religion and learn about these people and try to copy them. We need to copy them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make one of us, one of our children, like Imam Shafi'i. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us with them in this place in Jannah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru wa kum astaghfiru. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah. We call them Imam. Imam it means a leader. A leader because they were not just normal scholars, they were hundreds of scholars, thousands of scholars. But these were the leaders that led the people into freedom, into thinking, into knowledge, into advancement. And Ummah was on the, on the top. The Ummah of Muhammad for 1,000 years led the world. Every research in every area of science is led by the Muslim. It's led by the Muslim Ummah. And they were human beings also. One, this is a story about Imam Shafi'i. One day he was sitting down in Halak house learning, and people used to come to ask the scholars, it's called fatwa, ask their opinion. And one man came and says to the scholars, I've divorced my wife. She's divorced. This is what did he say to her? He said, oh, If you're not more beautiful than the moon, you are divorced. If you're not more, you're not in the desert, the moon is the most beautiful thing you see. Everything else is sand and rocks. So in the, in the poetry, the moon is beautiful, sign of beauty. So the man says to his wife, if you look more beautiful than the moon, you are divorced. She said, okay, I'm divorced. Get away from me, don't touch me. So he goes to the scholars and says, please help me out. I did this silly thing. I said to my wife, if you look more beautiful than the moon, you're divorced. The scholar says to him, she is divorced. You can't play with this. She is divorced. Who heard it? Imam Shafi heard it. So he says to the man, come here. What, what, what is the question? Is I said to my wife, if you're more beautiful than, if you're not more beautiful than the moon, you are divorced. He says, no, no, your wife is more beautiful than the moon. The man strangled him. Where did you see my wife? <laughs> he cried, where did you see my wife? I didn't see your wife. I read the Quran. 
أن القرآن سيز ولقد كرمنا بني آدم أن القرآن سيز لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم الله سيز the most honored creation of Allah is human we've created human in the best form not about the moon Allah says about the human so your wife is more beautiful by the word of the Quran your wife is yours she's not divorced go back to your wife that is how intelligent he is and how in involved with the people so these are our examples. These are the people who need to spend our time like them. If we spend all his life traveling to gain the knowledge, to put the knowledge for us, we are responsible to look after it. We have the books. The books is full, full of hadith. We can just read it. It's online. You just type and you find it. It's on video and MP3 and MP4, all others in the mobile phone. All we need to do is just love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because those who love something, they spend their time on it. Those who love something, you know, you see how many people spend the time on games. How we spend, spend the time in online, on Facebook, on Twitter. Yeah, because they like it. These people waking up 5 o'clock in the morning jogging. Because they like this life. We love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anything else. We love the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa more than anything. We love the Sahaba and the scholars more than anything else. And we are so fortunate and lucky. Allah chose us to be from this Ummah, to be from this Deen, to be from the follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We can't lose it. Wallahi, we can't lose it. We can't take it easy. We need to spend some time and effort to learn the Deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to learn about this great generation of the scholars and Sahaba. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring from our families those who will be like a Shafi'i. May Allah bring from our families those who will be like a Bukhari. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our children learn the Deen and hold on to the Deen and develop the Deen so everybody else knows about it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us to serve the Deen and help us to help those who need help. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our community, protect our family and make us righteous and pious and fill our home with the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our heart and our mind with the glory of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the religion of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our heart and mind with the respect to the deen and respect to the scholars. Inna Allah wa malakata wa salluna ala al-Nabi ya ayuhu al-Ladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik ala al-Nabi ka habibu Muhammad Allahumma rafu nana dhanubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabit aqdamana wa nsurna ala man adana Allahumma اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا سبلا من اهتدى واخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين واقم الصلاة